Welcome to PCM Podcast, a series of informative podcasts with experts in their field exploring a wide range of topics in payments. The theme for today's session is account to account payments or A to A payments. As the digital revolution continues, the way we pay is changing. Most payments professionals know about the worldwide growth of digital wallets and are aware of e-commerce taking over during COVID, as well as the recent popularity of contactless card transactions. But if these trends are well known, people know less about other new payment methods like account to account payments. Boosted by regulatory changes and customer demand across Europe and North America, account to account payments are experiencing storming growth. Today, we explain what's behind this phenomenon and why account to account payments are perfect for the modern economy. I'd like to introduce our expert for the day, Ree Burns. Ree is CCO at Zimpla. She has 10 years experience in B2B suppliers, covering payments, affiliation, sales, relationship building and leadership. But the most important thing you need to know about her is that she loves country music. Zimpla offers an instant bank payment solution, which is both PSD first and conversion first. So Re, welcome to PCM Podcasts. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to it. Okay, so we're not going to waste any time and we're going to jump straight in. Uh, so A to A payments, as we said in the in the preview, they're growing massively. We're seeing them grow around thirty percent a year. What factors do you feel have led to this amazing growth? Yeah, I think the key is really uh, safety, simplicity, and speed. Um, when you break it down to like the bare bones, account to account payments are super easy to do, and the money will be transferred instantly, uh, whether it's in or out. Uh, um, like we, we don't want to wait for anything anymore. Our time and money are so precious. We want next day delivery. We want same day delivery. Uh, we want our like food takeaway to arrive within 30 minutes. Um, and it, it translates into other areas. We want our loan payout, our insurance payout or our refunds to be in our account instantly uh, as well. And nothing in the payment space has really ticked all of these boxes in the past, um, which is why I think now account to account payments is really booming. Uh, and not only in markets where banking has already been quite strong, like Scandinavia and Sweden, um, but also in really, it's been taking market share in very card heavy markets like the UK. Um, it can be challenging to get users to switch over from card initially. But what we see is that once they switch, they stay with account to account payments. Um, another uh, good reason, I think, is that we've seen brands like Amazon really go to war with cards recently in multiple very card heavy markets. Um, and just today, uh, BT in the UK announced their exploration of bank payments. And it really seems like they're looking to shift a lot of their consumers over to that way of paying. Um, so I think the growth has already been huge, but we're just seeing like the beginning and it's just going to keep growing from here. Mm -hmm. OK, so um, let's uh, you mentioned the banks there. Let's get to the banks in a minute. Uh, but perhaps you can say something about the advantages of A to A payments from a merchant and a consumer perspective. You've touched on them there a little bit, but what about especially compared to standard debit and credit transactions or functions? Yeah, I think for merchants, a large one is really cost. Um, cards seem to be like increasing their costs continually, regardless of pushback from huge actors like Amazon. Um, and in some sectors like travel, there is a growing risk of chargebacks via card. Um, there's also flexibility with card payments. Uh, cards kind of have a brand in their own right and you can't affect their flow or their UX in any way. Um, but with bank payments, there's a lot more flexibility for the merchants um, to kind of customize the flow for best conversion for their users. Um, and yeah, with account to account payments, the price point uh, is better uh, and chargebacks are basically non-existent. Uh, so it's kind of win-win for the merchants. Uh, for, for consumers, um, it's really more in line with their daily habits. Instead of hunting for your wallet or trying to remember your card number, your CVV, your expiry, um, you have everything you need on the device that like barely leaves your hand all day, um, which is you know, maybe kind of sad, but it's how it is. We're on our phones uh, constantly. And if you can make payments directly from your phone, um, it's a super plus, I think. Um, you have a lot more control in choosing which account you want to spend from. Uh, and you can really spend safe in the knowledge that you don't have to wait three to five working days to get your money back should you need a refund. Um, a colleague of mine mentioned recently um, how he'd used a service in Sweden. He was able to pay instantly, no problem. Um, but when he needed to get his money back, he had to wait 12 working days. 
um, which is just crazy. Uh, with account to account payments, consumers are more likely to come back. Uh, and yeah, account to account payments are also perfect for large transactions. Um, there can be limits with other payment providers and also longer delays. Um, whereas with account to account payments, if you're approved for a loan for a car, or if you have like a high insurance payout, or you want to buy a high ticket item, um, account to accounts means that you can purchase it instantly and the money is transferred instantly and you get it in your account right away. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that's great from the perspective of the, of the merchants and the consumer. Um, I guess a lot of people think that account to account payments are in somehow uh, a, a move against the banks, but from a banking perspective or from a bank perspective, what, what are the advantages? You know, how do you see um, A to A payments working in terms of the integration with the banking system? Um, yeah, I, I think they are a benefit to the banks. They really, um, I think the big advantage is that they make banks relevant again for the consumers. Um, as people switch away from credit card payments, prepaid cards or e-wallets, um, they move back to using their bank accounts, which means uh, the banks get to know their consumers better. They know what are their spending habits and they get to know that their consumers are spending uh, via a much safer method. Um, cards, your wallet can get stolen. Your your e-wallet accounts can get fished, but it's much less likely with bank payments. So they know there's more security for their, their consumers too. Um, and when it comes to like integrating with their systems, um, with the release of the PSD2, uh, which we'll talk about as well, the, the integration is really a breeze um, between us and the banks. Um, they have to open up their APIs to facilitate fintechs like Zimpler to be able to build payment methods on their payment rails. Um, and good APIs mean that we can make sure the UX for a user to move money backwards and forward. It's all in one place. It's super smooth and it's really easy for them to follow. Uh, they don't need to lo like open a new window, log into their bank, uh, copy paste payment details, remember their reference. Um, they can really do everything uh, all in one place. Um, sadly, not all of the banks are quite up to the same level. Um, a lot of banks do have amazing APIs where we can build really good uh, converting and consumer friendly uh, flows. Um, but the rest of the banks, they're definitely getting there. It's new area for them it's new technology for them but we work very closely with them to help them improve their payment rails as well okay so we've talked a little bit about the merchants and we talked about the consumer and we've touched on the bank side and of course that all sounds really positive and we know that there's this growth happening is there anything that you feel is negative about the growth of a2a payments you know are there any downsides to this yeah, I think things like uh, fraud or what I like to refer to as friendly fraud is definitely a challenge that um, we will face and that we will need to find good ways to kind of work with. Um, usually what would happen, like your card can get stolen and you can, you can just call your card issuer and uh, begin a chargeback with your bank payment. Um, it's it, it's not that people will steal your, your credentials because they would need your phone, your passcode, your banking login. It's much more likely um, that you see maybe someone that you trust and you've given your details to will use your, your bank account in a way that you don't want. Or maybe you will get fooled by, um, you know, some get rich quick scam and you will knowingly make a payment um, that then you don't get what you kind of had hoped for. And in these cases, you can't really uh, create a chargeback in the same way as you can for a card because you knowingly uh, gave these details out or, or, or made this payment. So that's definitely something that... Um, it's just good to be aware of. And I think we try and mitigate that by really investigating the industries that we work in, uh, avoiding kind of high risk uh, industries where there could be more instances of scams. Uh, we work closely with our merchants and with the police uh, for any police requests that we get. Um, but it's something that uh, yeah, I should definitely be mindful in the space that great, no chargebacks, but what protections are there for the consumers when they do uh, find themselves in, in, in these situations? Okay, so you you did just touch on on PSD two, so let's just um, let's just come on to that. I mean, thinking about regulation around this type of payment, how, how do you or how did you see the advent of PSD two um, help the growth of A two A payments? Uh, it was integral. Um, the APIs that the banks released um, meant that we can build a payment flow. Um, that works. It makes bank payments super simple for the user and convert really well for the merchants. Um, 
It means that merchants don't have to hold bank accounts at every single bank in a country in order to facilitate instant payments. Um, we get the APIs, we can build the product, we can build the bank relations, and the merchant gets something that works really well off the shelf, but can also be customized to their specific needs. Um, and on top of ease of use, uh, the merchant, they just have one balance, one place to log in, see all transactions. They can uh, reconcile all of their payments uh, and accounting for the month. Um, so even for like an operational and admin point of view, um, it really makes kind of everybody's lives easier. I guess uh, most of us would like to think that this is in the rearview mirror, but um, I know that we're seeing some some uh, resurgence in, in, in Europe and especially, you know, let's just have a, a quick conversation about COVID um, because it feels like that did help uh, become a kind of catalyst for uh, the A2A market. Um, one thing that I call out in particular is in a recent white paper that you guys did uh, around A2A payments, you you specifically mentioned the gig economy as a, as a segment. Um, you know, what are your thoughts around that? Have you seen that segment accelerating growth? Is there something particular there that, that, that you, as from the simpler perspective, have seen? Yeah, I mean, for us, this, this whole period has been wild. Um, in the beginning, when kind of COVID was sort of happening, we very much, um, we chickened out slightly. We kind of held back. We thought, let's see. Um, we could have really ramped up our teams and our offerings, but we thought, let's give us a few months to see what happens. But what we saw was exactly like I said in the gig economy, especially, um, yeah, we, we saw a, a incredible growth. Um, while many industries were stalling or slowing down, these other like newer industries really took off. Um, but also the industries that were hit by, by the pandemic have had the time to actually sit and assess new payment methods for the first time. Um, and we're also seeing a shift there to bank payments. Um, one example that I always uh, point to is that we saw um, the, the kind of, it's, it's like a gig platform Fiverr, their share price increased over 500% um, <laughs> during the pandemic um, as people flooded to these, uh, these platforms to try and earn some extra money on the side. Um, and we've seen so many new gig platforms launching. Um, and really the most important thing for a gig platform to succeed is to have a lot of giggers. So there are people there ready to take on the jobs and tasks. Um, and the best way to get a large amount of gig giggers is to be able to pay them instantly after a job or weekly or however they see fit and account to account payments uh, is the best way to do this. Um, another example is in Malta before the pandemic. Um, we had food delivery, but you had to call up the restaurant. You had to pay by card over the phone or in cash when it arrived. Um, but with uh, with COVID kind of hitting the island, uh, Bolt launched their food delivery here and it completely transformed the island. Suddenly people could stay home uh, and still enjoy takeout. And it meant jobs increased uh, because now there was so much call for drivers. Um, so now you can order food from any restaurant in Malta, you can track the progress, you can track the delivery. Um, and I think the next step there is to make sure that platforms like that have an account to account solution so their drivers can get paid instantly at the end of the shift. Um, that will really see more and more people uh, take to that work. They know they can get their money uh, instantly. Um, then on the other side of that, travel, the industries that really struggled like travel, um, they have had these two years to sit, look at their business, um, and make changes where they think they can save money or build a better product and account to account payments is really growing there as well. Um, it solves a lot of the, the current problems in travel. They can cut their costs and they can offer instant refunds. They have a bit more protection against chargebacks. Um, so, yeah, I think a lot of industries have exploded during COVID and even the ones that haven't have really looked to account to account payments to help them get back on their feet. Mm -hmm. So it occurs to me you've identified gig and, and, and maybe a couple of other segments, but, you know, in the middle of this explosive growth that we're seeing or that we're discussing here, what, what do you see as the next stage for, for Zimpler in this growth? Yeah, I think you know, we want to do so much and we could do so much. So I think the, the most important thing is that we stop, assess and prioritize um, and kind of organize and plan for the, for the coming year. Um, nothing that happened over the last two years was what we expected. So now we want to try and be a bit more prepared. I think a key 
uh, focus for us is going to be international expansion. So taking what we know works to different markets where we think it could be uh, a really good fit. And then also continuing to grow in these industries where we see that account to account payments can solve uh, problems that they're having. Brilliant. Reburns, thank you very much for joining us on the PCM podcast. Thank you for having me.